Now, in particular, you're working with special education populations. Mm -hmm. So, so you probably have lower ratios, you know, fewer kids per teacher. But the needs are very different, right? The 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 level of support that they require is is different. So, what are the ways that you're you're able to help them incorporate things like the, through self determination theory? We know autonomy, competence, relatedness. Are is that something that that you help them focus on, or is it, you know how does that fit in with with what you're teaching? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the assumption is that there's lower numbers in special ed classes, but you know, today we are we have a lot of co-taught inclusive classes, and right, right, okay. Sometimes we have a lot of you know student teacher teacher ratios are still high, mm -hmm. but you know my job as a teacher of teachers and right. my job as a researcher of intrinsic motivation, right, um, and homeschooling and unschooling sometimes doesn't coexist in the way I would love it to, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. because my teachers need to know how to work within a system yeah. and their own classrooms. So I start off with intrinsic motivation, right? Mm -hmm. I start off mm -hmm. with what I call the magic of teaching, which is cognitive evaluation theory and mm -hmm. you know, giving mm -hmm. kids and facilitating in kids a sense of competence, autonomy, and relatedness. Yep. And I also end with that, right? So, mm -hmm. so start off with the magic of intrinsic motivation mm -hmm. and self-determination and cognitive evaluation theory. And they end with that magic as well. But in the middle, there's lots of sort of, you know, how do you create a positive classroom culture? culture? How mm -hmm. do you take care of your students with their many needs? How do you differentiate and generalize learning? Mm -hmm. So I hope that the anchors of intrinsic motivation and self-determination, cognitive evaluation theory are there both at the mm -hmm. beginning and the end. But in the middle, we really have to dig deep into the stuff that they work with and deal with every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I will tell you, there's a lot of good stuff going on, right? So mm -hmm. I just got a grant from the New York State Developmental Disabilities Planning Council, and we are creating a decision-making curriculum for mm -hmm. students with disabilities. And I have eight amazing people on that grant. And part of the things that we're talking about, right? Like decision-making is an important skill, not only for right. kids with disabilities, but for everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And part of the way I... I <sighs> I feel my calling is to always help and support is by mm. creating curriculums that are supportive both of my teachers and their students. Mm -hmm. And that decision-making curriculum project is one of the ways that I can help support, right? And decision-making has a lot of sort of internal uh, intrinsic motivation aspects to it. Right, it right. also, there's like a very specific framework that we use that really lies upon, you know, the the framework of self-determination theory and mm -hmm. cognitive evaluation theory. So that's one of the ways I try to help students and teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're in our second year, we're doing amazing things. We're mm. supposed to grow across New York state and we're doing that really successfully. So mm. that's really exciting. And I think I can support in that way, right? By providing them with curriculum. Mm -hmm. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.